Hey! Have you ever been called a hoarder over that massive pile of treasure? Does your commanding presence and fiery personality allow you to tip the scales? Congratulations, you might be a draconic bloodline sorcerer. But what is a draconic bloodline sorcerer? Well, find yourself a dozen sheep to munch on, try not to sneeze too close to anything flammable, and if you accidentally burn down an entire village in a terrifying monstrous rage, that's really just a family tradition. I'm just carrying on an old family tradition. Have you ever felt connected to something ancient, magical, and beyond our mortal understanding? Maybe somewhere in your soul you feel drawn to greatness or have a bit of an oversized ego. Well, what if I were to tell you that not only is that sense of grandeur real, but it also means that your great-great-great-grandma Gertie had a thing for lizards. Oh yeah, bud. As you try to shake that mental image, let me tell you about what having a fire-breathing papa really does to you. A draconic bloodline sorcerer are those rare few who, through some way or another, have a direct lineage to dragon kind. And while you may get some dragony features like scaly skin or your papa's chin, my papa had a big old chin. The best thing you ever got from that side of the family was a dragon-sized injection of top-of-the-line, pure-grade, high-performance dragon magic. You heard me, baby. We got the good stuff. And unlike those losers trying to grasp at spellcasting through learning an instrument or, God forbid, pfft, reading, we come by this shit natural. It's not just any arcane practitioner that can tap into the same energy source as the most dangerous creatures on the planet and emulate any idiot that dares call you a Nepo baby. You've got that heat. Just make sure you don't get burned. But first... Do you miss a time when super malls were a new idea and VHS was the pinnacle of innovation? Are you aching to break out those tight aerobic pants and hit the town? Well, if you want to blast back to a time long ago in a fantasy world far away, you need to pick up Dice Dungeon's new supplement, 80s Adventures. 80s Adventures brings back the nostalgia of D&D in a way never seen before, by letting you live out your favorite fantasy campaign with all the Pac-Man, hair metal, and leg warmers you can ask for. Play as one of 12 new subclasses like the Path of Dance Barbarian or Way of the the Crane Monk, or the Pact of Greed Warlock, or use one of over 50 new magic items, 30 new spells, and tons of new monsters and content just for the DM. And if you can believe it, they've even crafted five whole modules based on your favorite 80s movies, from slashers to action and more. So if you want to be one of the first to grab 80s adventures for yourself, make sure to hit the link in the description below and join the Kickstarter today. This radical new book is 100% funded, but there are plenty of stretch goals to come and we'll add even more content on release. So make sure you hit that link and Tell them Yemba sent you. Cowabunga. A big thanks to Dice Dungeons for sponsoring the show. And now, back to the video. So you want to learn more about your herpetological heritage and sling a few spells to boot. Well, thanks to the magic of transfiguration, a few glasses of wine, and a Marvin Gaye album, you start level one with the good stuff. And right off the bat, we need to figure out what kind of dragon our ancestor was, which will inform what kind of magic we get good at. Were they a fierce and powerful red dragon, or a clever and talkative brass dragon? Then fire is your element of choice. Or what about a deadly white or highly intelligent silver dragon? Well, then ice will be the most Nice. And since it seems like you'll be seeing a few of your dragon cousins at the next family reunion, you'll need a way to talk to them. So you also learn Draconic, and your proficiency bonus is doubled for any check you make when chatting up the big boys. We also gain some small physical changes from our Draconic Resilience as scales begin to emerge on your skin in the color of your all-powerful progenitor. This lets us gain one extra hit point each time we level up, as well as set our AC to 13 plus dex instead of the normal 10 to shrug off a few more attacks than your average run-of-the-mill mage. Which makes sense, we got a pop-pop to please, we can't be getting smacked around out there. But nothing makes a dragon happier than messing around with some magic, and as a spellcaster that's exactly what we're gonna do. Like all sorcerers we can pull spells that suit our needs from the sorcerer list, but since we specialize in the elemental magics of our draconic forebearer, it makes the most sense to lock in on those types of spells. And while I'll touch on these a little more in a minute, don't skimp on those big damage dealers, you'll want them later on. But before we get there, we'll go ahead and find our font of magic, which lets you dive down deep into the dragon's belly and pull out tons of extra juice, gaining sorcery points equal to your sorcerer level, which will let you spend spell slots to create points or convert your points to create spell slots. 
and while useful in a pinch, you might want to save those for uh, right now. Because at third level, you gain access to meta magic, allowing you to see beyond the normal flow of the weave and change its arcane form at the fundamental level. This lets you do stuff like quicken spell to turn an action spell into a bonus action spell, heighten spell to burn through enemy resistances, or empowered spell to re-roll damage dice. All of these are incredibly useful, but pay attention to the ones that make the most sense with your heritage. For example, twin spell goes hard on witch ball, especially if you're a blue dragon kid. Or go bananas as a green and use transmuted spell to change all your spells damage to poison. Planning out your build goes a long way in this one, so be smart and pay attention and we'll make sure these fights don't drag on. And that'll bring us to level 5 for some magical guidance, which will let you spend a sorcery point to re-roll a failed ability check, possibly saving you from a tight jam. But let's talk about level 6 with Elemental Affinity. Now each time you cast a spell that matches your ancestor's element, you can add your Charisma modifier for free, giving cantrips like Firebolt or Acid Splash a really nice boost for red or black bloodlines, but more damage is more damage. And if you combine that with Empowered Spell to give that extra damage to all bad guys hit by your Lightning Bolt or fireball, you're gonna tear through these dudes like a hot knife through butter. But if that wasn't all, you can also give yourself resistance to your own damage type for an hour by spending a sorcery point. And while maybe not as useful as your other abilities, you never want to be punked by monsters in the same type category. It just looks bad. But after a huge jump to level 14, we'll take a leap of faith and spread our dragon wings. These babies give us a flying speed equal to our walking speed, and you can flex them as a bonus action on your turn, as long as no armor or clothing are in the way. But these wings, while magical, are attached. Not just spectral manifestations like some other classes, you got wings now. And since there's no time limit for these bad boys, you can actually just never put them away. You can keep them on all day. And I love that. Go flex on dragonborns or kobolds with your nice new pair of flappers, or go make fun of the other sorcerers for having to do this with a spell slot. I'm hot cause I'm fly, you ain't cause you not, not. This is why, this is why, this is why. But it's 18th level that'll give us our capstone with the Draconic Presence. As an action on your turn, you can spend 5 sorcery points to pour all your Draconic Might into one devastating roar, and create an aura of shock or awe in a 60 foot radius around you. Each creature in the aura must make a wisdom saving throw or be charmed or frightened, whichever you choose, until that aura ends. The aura lasts for a minute and creatures that make the save don't have to remake it, but what's more draconic than scaring the shit out of an entire wave of enemies and watching them run for their silly little lives. And that's it! Uh, <clears throat> that's it. That's it. Oh yeah. <sighs> At 20th level, you get Sorceress Restoration to restore 4 sorcery points at the end of short rest, which is bad. But does the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer light my fire? It's alright! The Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer has some really cool things going for it. The lore surrounding your Draconic Ancestry is great for character building, and I really like the physical benefits with the HP and AC increases. And later levels in this subclass kill with the built-in flying speed and Draconic Presence, that stuff rocks. It's unfortunately the section in the middle that lags pretty hard for me. I personally wanted a lot more from your elemental affinity ability that just isn't there. I actually took a double and triple check of the subclass just to make sure I didn't miss anything, but no, it's just kinda lacking. This does, like many other subclasses, have to do with the PHB effect, and I get that, but I kinda wish they could have upgraded the quote unquote textbook sorcerer a bit. And that resistance thing should be either permanent or like a one hour immunity. That power is just way too weak. And although this may sound like a downer, it's not so bad that it ruins the subclass. There's still plenty you can do here, but it's going to depend heavily on your spells. Luckily you have tons of fun stuff to build on like Dragon's Breath, Agonazer's Scorcher, Illusory Dragon, Cone of Cold, or Cloud Kill that you can match to your element for extra damage, and I think that's cool. But you can always do one of my favorite things with this subclass and just re flavor everything completely and play whatever you want. Blue Dragon Bloodline with awesome electricity powers? Sounds like static shock to me. Who said anything about a white dragon? I'm Mr. Freeze, baby. Alright everyone, chill. 
But if you want that dragon flavor, I get it. It's a great concept and worth toying with. But if you're feeling a little weak, you can always talk to your DM and see if they'll give you a boost. It's not a big deal. And you can always multi-class. Subclasses like the Ancestral Dragon Monk or the Drake Warden Ranger give you a nice double dose of dragon goodness, or basically any paladin does awesome with this stacked on. Just remember to always honor your dragon ancestors, because being a badass is hereditary. So if you have an ego bigger than the mountain your gold is buried in, you settle most disputes by fighting fire with a lot more fire, and can never look at photos of Gam Gam the same way after your scale started coming in, guess what? You might be a draconic bloodline sorcerer. Hey guys, you are all so cool and I can't thank you enough for watching. For anyone out there having a tough time, Maya Angelou once said, do the best you can until you know better, then when you know better, do better. Just a reminder that we grow as people a little more each day, and I hope you remember to give yourself grace if you make a mistake. But I'm still proud of you either way. If you like what I do, you can support the channel with a like or a comment or follow us over on Patreon like these awesome people with top tiered patrons getting really fun games DM'd by me. So to those guys, Soros Sin, King Osiris, Miles Not Yards, Tedzy and Spider Lover, y'all are the best. And as always, please come hang out in the Discord server, we're always having a great time over there. But until next we meet, thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.